live, I think. <laughs> so hello, everyone. Um, if you are seeing this live and you want to watch, give us a little thumbs up or a wave. Um, we planned this live. We posted it as an event. Believe it or not, Kyleen is here. Hold, please. I'm not even seeing it. Oh. Ah, she's there. She's there. So she's here for my uh, my virtual support. I've got her on a little wobbly camera. So if you hear piping in in the background, that's what's up. So she's going to let me know if you are, if you're popping up or if you see me or whatever. So I don't know if anyone sees me. Anyway, so, okay, Kylene joined me. Yeah. That's great. Okay, good. So anybody else, feel free to just give us a wave. Um, before we start, I just wanted to take everyone's temperature, see how you guys are doing um, in the quarantine. Uh, we have to say we've been completely floored by the, the take and make orders. It's been amazing. It's something that we've offered for a while now, right? Probably a couple of years, but just not something that everyone really was interested in taking advantage of. And now, considering what's been going on, it's actually worked out really nicely. And I know that we've really primarily accommodated, accommodated people who live locally, um, but we can ship. So just to give you a status of where we're at. So last night, we cut everything off. Like in other words, we just like stopped selling them because we sold a lot of them and we worked really hard to get everything prepped. We still have four or five kits that have we have to finish putting together and those will be out and ready on my front porch tomorrow. Um, and I know we've got some going to Galway Rock that are getting delivered. And then we're gonna take a, just a little respite. We need to regroup. Uh, we need, we're out of, we are out of supplies. That's the thing. We've literally pilfered our, our supplies. So I know you can't see right now, and I will try to twist this, but this has actually been my make and take setup. So you can see there's all the paints. This is also known as a dining room. Uh, but around here, this was our take and make fulfillment center. So um, I've still got all the supplies. So anyway, um, do we have any joiners yet? Should I start? I'm not yeah, you can start. I can't really tell. I don't know. I know. I for, we haven't done a live in a while, so I don't know if anybody is here watching or not. But you know what? I'm going to keep going. I believe, I believe, if there's a little I and it says seven, does that mean seven people are watching us? Correct. Yes. Hi, seven people, whoever you are out there. So I'm going to go ahead and start, but I believe... You can watch this later. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you bought a kit and first of all, even if you didn't get a kit, welcome to join us. Um, but if you bought a kit and you're kind of not in a space right now to craft at the moment, totally fine. You can go back and watch this. So you, I'm just going to show you the things that you should have in your take and make kit. So if your take and make kit arrived or you scooped it up um if you were lucky you got it in one of these cute little boxes moving forward you're going to get it in whatever box i have laying around so because that's the story with our supplies so you probably got um there's the hubs in the background by the way um so say hey baby oh, there you go okay so you got a set of instructions which actually lays everything out really nicely you got your stencils and you got your wood project and you got a brush and some sponges and some paints and possibly you might have gotten a you might have gotten a hanger like a, a hanger that we put on the back of our projects in case um you had a sign that could be hung so um, that's what you should have. If you're missing anything, message us and let us know. We tried to make sure that everybody had plenty of paint, but we did have a couple people re uh, reach out because they were missing a couple of things. We really crammed, tried to scramble to get the first, um, like 18 kits done. So 
we might have missed a couple things. So holler if you're missing anything. So you might also notice too, most of the paints aren't filled up very much because you don't need a ton of paint. So if you're doing multiple kits in the same household, maybe share your paints if you don't mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So the very first thing I wanna point out is some things that you may want to have on hand in addition to the stuff that we gave you. So one of the things that might be useful because you're gonna to have to actually scrape your, um, your stencil onto your board. I have, you know, scraper, a scraper that I got with my cutter, with my cutting machine, and we have a bunch at our workshops, but the, you can get them and um, you might have one in your kitchen drawer. You might have, find like a gift card or something sure, in sure, yeah. AC more. Pretty sure this is useless, but um, I hope it didn't have any money on it. But anyway, this is going to be handy, something like that to be able to press the stencil onto the board. In addition to that, you may want to have something that you can use that's um, sharp to be able to pick those little pieces of a um, of the stencil off. So one of the things you might want to use, like a toothpick or a safety pin, or um, like you could take a um, paper clip and you can kind of unfold it and get yourself a little pointy end, and then you could be able to pick the little pieces off. So that should be it. If you wanna do some touch-ups, if you don't have um, small paintbrushes laying around, um, Q-tips can kinda of work in a pinch. So just some things. Um, I also have a cup of water. Um, so that's gonna be helpful too, if you're using your brush and you wanna be able to share it. So. I actually have a project that I started, so I'm gonna show you what the project looks like and then what I'll be, I'm gonna be doing something similar. So this right here is a stain with a dry brush. You see that? So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna show you how to stain and then how to dry brush and all the steps in between. So the first step is to stain. So that's your background color. So for those of you that haven't, um crafted with us before just to let you know so everything that you see on your stencil that's white is going to be the background of your sign your project so for me i'm gonna do a stain and then a dry brush but mostly my background is going to be white ish so that all of this will will really pop off of there so that's my plan for this, but you can just stain your background. It's actually super easy. And I tell people at workshops all the time, you can't mess it up. I, Kylene is literally crafting with me right now. She's like, know, it's, it's, it's really crazy. adorable. I wish you could see it. I wish I knew if anybody was here. It feels like I'm talking into outer space, but that's okay. Maybe next time we'll do like a conference call or something. Like right, but that's okay. I'm gonna keep going because I have a feeling when some of you start to do these kits, this might come in handy. And you know what? If nobody ever watches it, then I won't feel so badly that I didn't bathe again today. Okay, so get into crafting. So the background of this one, I am going to be doing in a dark gray color. So when you're doing your background, when you stain, all you need to do is and i'm gonna put my rubber gloves on so those of you that are being like super cautious with your germs pretty handy um mostly because it keeps yourself from getting filthy if you're doing this with little kiddos i'm gonna point out a couple of things first of all have them wear old clothes if you have an old apron or maybe an old t-shirt of yours or your their dad's or whatever that they can just get filthy because they're gonna get dirty um if you're doing this with really littles, um, just keep in mind, you know, it's their creation. doesn't have to be perfect, so just let them work through it. If you're particular about how it's going to look, then maybe have them focus their energy on doing the background because you really can't jack that up. And then maybe be a little more hands-on after the stencil goes on. Now, Kylene, you've done this with lots of littles. Would you agree that that's probably a good bet? I do. Okay. Probably. This is it. <laughs> All right, so 
You got baby wipes also, by the way, a little bag of your baby wipes. So that's, for the most part, I put plenty in there for everyone to share. So you really probably only need one for projects as small. So you're just gonna take your baby wipe and you're gonna dip it in your background color. So for me, that is this dark gray color. So you're literally, I'm gonna turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. So you're literally just gonna rub it onto the board. I believe during our workshops, I call this a schmear. You smear it on, and I'm also not wearing an apron, so the good, there's a very good chance that all of this paint is gonna end up on my front. So there you have it. All right, so you are going to wipe the whole thing down. Now, the more you use the baby wipe to pull the paint off, the more you're gonna actually see the uh, wood grain underneath. So you're just going to keep doing this. And as you're doing it, it looks like a hot mess. Like that's just a nasty hot mess. But as you cover the entire board, you'll end up with this really neat looking stained background. So once you're done staining, and this is literally all you have to do, you're going to let it dry. It will dry much lighter than um, you see it at the moment. So just keep that in mind. So what we use often at our workshops is just a hair dryer. So you can just hit it with the hair dryer and let it dry because basically each of the next steps depends on whether or not the board is completely dry. Like whether or not you can do a dry brush or whether or not the stencil will stick on, that kind of thing. So right now, I believe I've got the whole thing covered. Now, I will remind you, don't forget about the size. So right here, my sides are plain, but on the one that I already did, I actually, um, I did stain the sides, so don't forget about those. So this right here is now covered in the gray, and I'm going to let that dry. So I'm going to set that aside. You can hit it with the hair dryer. You can do another activity and what have you. So I'm going to show you guys how to dry brush, and then I'm going to show you how to apply the stencil. So we're sort of fast forwarding this. It, it, the actual process takes a little longer because you have to let it, everything dry throughout each step. So you may want a garbage bag nearby because it kind of generates a lot of sticky stuff. If the weather's nice, you may want to do it outside, mamas. Um, lay down all the plastic, you know what I'm saying? All right, so this is a just a plain old piece of stained wood, like just a little scrap so that you guys could see. So I use this, and I know the color is hard to see, but it's like a Christmas green like an evergreen color. So I'm gonna just show you how to dry brush on something like this, just so you can see how it works. So what I'm trying to do is accomplish this right here, okay? So it looks kind of distressed, so you can see kind of the underneath color, but the color on top. So just to show you. So the underneath color is this, it's Cascade, of course, because it's my fave. Um, it's kind of an aqua turquoisey color. So I stained the whole thing in that color. And then I took the only shade of white that we have and I dry brushed that over the top. So the reason we dry brush is because it gives it sort of a neat uh, distressed effect. So if you don't want it to look distressed, just paint the whole thing the way you would paint anything else. So if that's what you're gonna do, don't worry about this. If you want it to look a little distressed, then you can dry brush. You can dry brush any color on top of any other color. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna put just the tip of your brush in the paint. See how I just have a little bit? And then I actually just dab most of it out on, um, I'm just using a baby wipe, but you could use paper or if you have a, you know, a plastic tablecloth you're gonna toss anyway, you could do that or um, just something that you don't mind it's gonna get paint on. So, and you can actually also use the side but to really, you want to really dab most of the paint off. That's why they call it a dry brush. So once you do that and you only have a little bit of paint on here, what you're going to do, let me see if I can get a good angle here. Let me do it this way. So what you're going to do is just lightly brush back and forth or up and down. And <laughs> I'm literally about to paint my own face. Okay. So that you can do in layers so that it gives a nice little dimension and it makes it look sort of old and weathered and worn because we like stuff that looks all weathered and worn and rustic and good stuff. So that is literally all you do. So once that is done, 
You can do a couple layers of that. If I wanted this mostly to be white, I would do maybe one or two more layers. Just let each one dry so that you can get um, a really nice finished look on it. So plus all those layers as it's drying really give it um, a really neat feel and it looks actually like kind of old weathered wood. So that's how you dry brush. So hold please. Hi, Abby. How are you? It's one of my TAs. She's watching. Thank you. Um, so she might be the only one watching us. Okay. So I just, this is just water. This is just water for railsies. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm legit hydrating. Okay. So this is my board. So now your board is dry. You've either just done your stained background or you have your dry brush. Now, Oh, one of the other things that's helpful to have around, um, but you don't have to, is if by chance you happen to have a any kind, either a sanding block or a little piece of sandpaper, wouldn't recommend you use a nail file because it'd take you forever. But if you have anything for sanding purposes, all you're going to do is just run that over the board before you apply the stencil to get it nice and smooth. Are you doing like a rainbow thing over there? Oh my gosh, she's using yeah. a hot glue gun. I got the glue gun out. Oh my gosh. Oh, is that the butt? It's a bunny is that butt. the butt? It's a bunny butt. Okay. okay. All right, so now my board is smooth. So the stencil is awesome because that's really what gives everything a nice crisp finish. However, it can um, it can be a little bit fussy. So you want to make sure of a couple of things. First of all, you want to be sure that you're using um, not too much paint and you want to make sure that your stencil's on really good. So your stencil basically is, I thought this would be a good theme for what's going on. All right. Um, your stencil is basically three layers. So you have the back and this is the back. It's got like the brand on there. And then you've got this, it almost looks like masking tape on the front and in the middle is your actual stencil. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your stencil and put it face down. So your stencils, because these projects are so small, will fit right smack in the middle of your board. So you don't have to worry about measuring and getting everything perfect. But if that's how you roll, you can always fold your stencil in half to find the middle and then measure out the middle of your board and then line them up. So I don't do that because that's not how I roll. So you put your stencil face down so that this side is what you're looking at. And then from the corner, and I'm going to try to show this to you, from the corner, you're going to peel your stencil off, but you want to make sure that none of the pieces of your stencil are stuck to the back. So you can kind of see right here as I'm pulling, part of my letter was stuck, but it did come off. But so just make sure all those bits stay on the stencil. St look at this blue part. If you don't see any little white pieces, you're in business. Here's a perfect example. Look right there. That's part of my E. I, wanna, I want that on my stencil. So I'm going to roll it back forward, make sure it's stuck. And then once all the pieces are on there, and if you're really having a tough time, use that little homemade scraper you got, your little gift card or whatever, and you can press it down. That will help the, those pieces to stick to the stencil. So once all those pieces are off, this bit, this can be thrown away, which to me, since I don't have a garbage, means I'm just going to throw it in my dining room. Okay, so now you have this sticky, sticky, sticky business, all right? So once you lay it down and you really press it down, that sucker is on there. So you, you're not fixing to move it. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but you're not. So I usually kind of just barely put it down and get a feel for where I want it without really pressing it just to see if it's straight. So I got that on there. Once you're happy with where it's located, then you're really going to press it on. So the first thing you can do is press it with your hands. All right. And then you can use your little makeshift scraper or your real scraper. I do have a real scraper, but I'm going to use my makeshift one because my real, oh, there's my real scraper. Pardon. All right. So once you rub that on there and the stencil's on really good, you can pull this top layer off. So I recommend you do the same kind of thing. You pull from the corner. Don't pull it directly up. Just 
sort of drag it along like this. So now this is going to come off and then you're going to be ready to paint. So you probably notice that you have little makeup sponges in there. Now, some of you, I tried to give you enough sponges for every color, but a lot of times what's helpful is you can cut the sponges into smaller pieces so that you have enough to go around. Um, another thing that occurred to me, we use painter's tape sometimes to sort of tape off parts that we don't want um, it to the paint to run over. You can actually use this piece if you decide not to throw it away. You can cut it into strips and use it as painter's tape. A little, a little helpful crafty survival tip, how about that, All right? So this is now coming off. I'm gonna save that in case I need it, but you probably won't. So now I'm ready to paint, sorry, paint. Okay, so let me see your bunny. Because apparently it's just you and I have, oh, it's a rainbow bunny with a do little you know white butt. rainbow thing? I do know, I messaged you that. Like, I'm, what, wait. What? It's an opening to talk about. Do you know about this whole rainbow thing? Because <laughs> that's what she said. Hi. Hi. Heather Noon. Hi, babe. Okay. So, yes. So the whole rainbow thing, it is called hashtag find the thing in the rainbow. 518 Rainbow Hunt. 518 Rainbow Hunt. So, I mean, if you're not in the 518, you could probably do it too. So people are getting very creative and they're coloring and drawing pictures of rainbows and putting them like in their windows or they're using chalk and coloring rainbows on their driveway. I've seen them on the road. And so the whole point of the activity is to keep everyone's spirits up, but also, also what? Is it a game? Like to give the kids something to do. Right. The kids can go around and Quentin said it made him feel happy because he saw something yesterday. That is the sweetest. That, that is very sweet. That is so sweet. I love that. I love that. Um, so should I use dark gray or black on my letters? What do you think? I think black. Black. Really just tie it together. So I'm gonna use black letters here and then I'm going to show you how to paint and how to pull the stencil off. And that is all she wrote. So the once your stencil's on good, you're good to go. So the next thing you want to make sure of is that you don't use too much paint. So my recommendation is that you just dab the paint, or sorry, the sponge into the paint. So I have a little, I have some paint on the bottom there, but you don't want it loaded up because if you use too much paint, you could end up with bleeding and that is not as fun. So I would recommend, so what I'm doing right here is I'm just literally wiping most of the paint off so that there's not a lot on there. Once you do that, then what you're gonna do is you are going to dab. Not like the dance, isn't that a dance? Or it's like a- Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, like the kids do it. It's a good thing they can't see me right now. I know. Although she looks cute, she's all like showered and shampooed. Her hair is bouncing and behaving. Mine is unruly, like my dogs and my husband. So how you doing? All right, so you're just gonna dab, 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 dab. This is gonna take a while. So I'm gonna keep dabbing. Um, what could we discuss in the interim? I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as possible. So you do all the same color, let's stay home? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dab. Um, I'm not dabbing, I'm cheating because sometimes I use a brush. I knew you were gonna do that. Well, because I gotta, I wanna, I don't want you guys to just be stuck here. Because we don't have any through the magic of television. We don't, I don't have one finished through the magic of television. I tried to get my act together, but that requires like three finished and partially finished products, yeah. projects, and that's not where we're at right now. So. So, yes, so um, the take and make kits, um, although I believe I was getting into that and then I never finished. So the take and make kits, if you did not get one, um, do not worry. We're trying to, we're just trying to work out getting more supplies, um, ordering them and how quickly we'll get them, like lumber and paint, those kinds of things, our basics. So uh, we're going to work through that. And once we figure all that out, we'll keep you guys posted. But I think 
our thought was what would be nice is if we could maybe offer the take and make kits a couple of days a week. Um, so say, just throwing it out there, like Thursday and Friday, we have the website open and then we do our sales and then that's it, just a couple of days. And then we'll give ourselves a couple of days to prep the kits and then so say for example if we decided to do it on a thursday and a friday then maybe on monday and tuesday we would have pickups for them so right now um as far as we know Galway rock is still doing some deliveries some local deliveries to the capital district as essential i know okay let's celebrate the fact that booze is considered essential like wine and and beer and booze and that because let me tell you why. Let's talk about why. Because everybody is stuck home with a family. Try not to kill any of your people. Absolutely. Oh, look at Heather. Heather's literally like our only audience member. Oh, okay. Oh, I love your face. You Can you see them? No, I don't think it thinks that I'm I'm crap lives. I'm just a plain old viewer right now. Well, that's not fun. No. I know. Okay. So I'm just going to keep going. So I'm paying. So, so the, here's the thing. So this is why that I think in my humble opinion, they're allowing the purchasing of the drinky poos is because everybody's stuck home with their family. So I hope that no one has strangulated anyone that they love yet. Um, you saw my husband, so proof he's still alive. Um, so thank you, Jesus, for the patience to do all that. Um, no, he's a good man. He's literally been to the grocery store 11 million times. Um, every time he leaves the house, he buys more food. Every time. He's not, he's been good about staying home, but like if he runs out to like get gas or go to the gas station to get something, he comes back with like more snacks and ice cream and I don't even know. So God help us. I saw a meme the other day that said, um, after all this, I'm either going to come out super fit and centered because I've been doing all of this meditation and yoga and taking advantage of like all these online um, you know, opportunities to stay centered and, and doing all of that. that, that, or 20 pounds heavier with a drinking problem. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So just saying, all right. So now I have painted, I mean, sponged very lightly, my entire background. Now you do not have to let it dry. We, most of the people at our workshops hate doing this when it's wet. So if you want to just let her, let it go, then that's fine. So you're going to take this whole thing off. There's really no rhyme or reason. We tell people sometimes they're splintering. So one of the things you can do is just pull the stencil off against the green of the wood. So that is what I'm doing. This whole thing is going to get thrown away. So if it happens to tear while you're pulling it off, it doesn't matter because it's literally all getting thrown away. So I'm going to let it tear. I'm not purposely tearing and ripping it off, Kylie. Yeah. Yeah. Taking your time. I'm taking my time and I'm getting this off of here. All these bits are going to get thrown away. So now when I told you earlier that you might want a tiny little sharp thing like a stick pin or a exacto knife if you have it or a little toothpick or something like that because after you pull the bulk of the stencil off what you'll notice is the middles of all the letters or the centers of your image are still stuck and that's okay you're actually going to pick those out so i am cheating and i'm using my exacto knife because it's way easier oh i spoke too soon no i didn't so you're, it's way easier to pick it out with an exacto knife, but you can use whatever you have. So what you're going to do is literally just get up under there. And I know it's wet, so it can be a little bit stressful, but you're just going to get underneath all those little pieces and you're going to pick them right out. So there's one. So I'm just going to keep doing that, picking those little pieces out. And then I'll show you my finished project. It's going to say product and it came out project project. 
Um, how you doing, Miss Kai? How's it going over there? I'm not looking at your face, so I don't know what you're doing. I'm focusing. I'm looking at your face. Okay. You know what I'm wondering? This is a lot of my chesticular area, but <laughs> you can see what I'm doing. Is that better? Um, no. Nothing changed at all. Wait, oh, wait, but I'm on the phone. Um, there's a delay on the computer. Is it? Can so, you see it now? Well, you should no, see still... the angle should be different on the computer. Well, what is wrong with you? When, when the computer catches up, you're moving it now. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, okay. wow. That's a significant delay. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, that's great. That that's great. Fantastic. So you can see what I'm doing. Now, since I designed these, I know where all the parts are, but that can be tricky too, finding those little spots. Um, so if you end up with little dings in there, it's not the end of the world. It's not about perfection. This is just about having a fun activity to do with your family while you're busy not killing each other. So <laughs> that's how we love through crafting and not strangling. Um, and then should be it. Well, this was an easy one. I'm glad I did this one. Okay. That's so good. pardon me. I like you. And if I was feeling fancy, you could also go back and like paint the sides, but I'm just going to leave the sides the way they are. Ta-da. Ta-da. That's the whole thing start to finish. So if you got a little um, hanging hardware, which looks like this. Oh, your girl has quarantine nails. Oh, that is some junk right there. Anyway, um, so if you got one of those, all you're going to do is literally just hammer it into the back. So you just put it just like that in the middle. In the middle. It's like, what's our favorite meme with Joey? I'm sorry. With my quotes, I'm sorry, yes. So wherever you see the middle, and then you just take a hammer, which of course I don't have. If I had a hammer. And then you, <laughs> this is my hammer. And then you hammer, and then it goes right into the back of the board. And that, my friends, is how you craft. All right. So that's the whole thing start to finish. Well, just say we want to see a picture. People have already started posting pictures. Have they? Yeah, there were a couple that came in today. They're freaking adorable. Okay. So. I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to do? Tell I don't me. know if they can hear me on this, but I'm going to start an album. And where we get pictures, I'm going to throw them all into one album. So that way we have like a whole like. I love that. I love that. So if you are working on your crafts, first of all, if you have any questions, message us. We got you. Um, if you, when you're done, we would love to see them. So you can post directly on our website. Is that true? No, I mean on our, our Facebook, Facebook page. page. So just tag, just tag us somehow and I'll grab the photo. Right. Or if you want to post it on your own page and tag us, you just do the at symbol and then craft lively and then we'll pop up and we'll be able to see it and share it and it'll be wonderful. So solid advice, let's stay home. Um, keep your eyes peeled for other people's projects and for us to post when we will be opening sales for take and makes. We also have the fun little thing that if we can get our act together, we wanna do that the fairies, the craft <gasps> Right, so we had this great idea I wish you guys could hear Kylene. I don't know if you can, because basically it looks like I'm crazy and that I'm hearing a voice in my head, but she's there. I'm not, I mean, I am crazy, but she's like, <laughs> she's totally right there. So, right. So we had this idea that we think is genius, especially with what's going on. We thought we would institute like a crafting fairy, like a random act of craftness. I just made that up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I like it. So yeah. what we're thinking is we could put together little like shelf sitters with just some little paints and some little cutie cuties and directions and then just like surprise people and just like hang it on the door, throw it in the mailbox, leave it on the front stoop. So we're going to let you know about that. But I, our thought was, so we're not like creeping up on people that weren't expecting us because that's a little, 
That's a little much this time of year. We don't want people thinking we're marauders. Marauders. It's a great word. Anyway, a um, word. It, thank you. Thank you. No, no, no. We're just craft fairies. So perhaps uh, if you have somebody that you think, oh my gosh, they would love that, um, then we're going to give you an opportunity to nominate people and then let us know where they are and then we'll just sneaky sneak surprise them. Just for fun. Just because. So that's it. That's the whole thing. I have been prattling on for 35 minutes. First of all, it's good to know that start to finish, it doesn't take much longer than 30 minutes to do this craft, although you got to let it dry and everything. But this is it, and I'm finished. I do plan, you know what I should have done? I should have filmed this. I mean, I am, but I'm going to try to do a, what is it called? What am I doing? A time lapse. Time lapse. So I do the thing in real time, and then it's like, speedy quick, and then you can watch the whole thing. So that's my plan. All right. So I believe I've chatted long enough. I'm going to let you kids enjoy your Sunday night. I hope it's all going smoothly. Um, show yourself some grace. Whatever you're doing, it's plenty. So don't freak out because you're trying to work and teach your kids and do all the junk. Please, please be kind to each other and to yourselves. Um, I think that's it. All right. We are so glad you guys are crafting with us virtually um, in your homes. It's awesome, and uh, we look forward to bringing you more cool stuff. All right? So be safe. Be healthy. Love you guys. See you soon. Bye. You don't have to hang up on me yet. I, did I end the? I didn't hang up on you. No, you don't have to. Okay. Wait, end.